We are live from Emma's apartment in Ohio. Hi guys, um, I will be seeing you guys in one real quick second. We are live from my apartment. Howdy, hi y'all, way, this is Trevor. Hello. He's from Best Buy, right in your EPA. Best Buy. Best Buy's coming in clutch right now. Um, thank you so much, Trevor, for being here with me. Um, you are actually looking at my legs. Um, he's down on the ground, but you can see him from my TV monitor. <laughs> Let's turn you up on my TV, if we can. Let's see about that. How's that going, everyone? Can, can we get a thumbs up if you can hear him? Can you give him? Can uh, we hear him now? Can you hear him now? I think you guys can hear well, him I can now. hear him now. You can hear, you can hear yourself now. Um, this is why I got to that thumbs up. <laughs> so, um, so, Trevor, you're with Best Buy. Um, people are home right now, and internet use is booming at home right now. Um, yeah, I know, I'm I using, I'm using quite a lot of internet. Um, that's why you guys are doing um, watching this right now at home because I'm, I'm assuming everyone's using a lot of internet at home and spending a lot of time on social media. Um, I'm working from home, people are working from home, people are going to class from home. Um, so what are some tips and tricks um, that people can do? I have some you know questions for you. So like, first of all, check the internet speed. What's up with that? So that's kind of your starting point because that's easy to do from home and also it's free. That, that's always a good starting point. Um, there's two main sites that I personally use. Um, the first one is going to be speedtest.net. The .net is important. Um, that one is going to be great if you're doing work from home. So you're doing video calls like we're doing now or anything of that nature because it tests not just your download speed, but also critically your upload speed, which right now working from home, that's going to be the more important thing when you're doing video calling, because you're going to need probably around five to 10 megabits per second to be able to handle that. It also makes sure that you're getting the speed that you're paying for. There's no point in upgrading your router if your speed is more being limited by your internet service provider than your equipment. Uh, the other really good one that I like is fast.com. Uh, the cool thing with that one, that one's run by Netflix. So it looked like Netflix traffic. So if you know, you're know you not so much working from home and you're just trying to watch like Netflix or YouTube or anything of that nature, you're getting a lot of buffering there. That's gonna be great for that one because that's more real world traffic. Um, my other uh, hidden secret one, um, you know, Best Buy plug here. Um, we actually have two apps. We have the Best Buy app that most people have, but we also have a cool new app called the Best Buy Home app. The cool thing with that one is you can go in there, you can track all your purchases, make appointments, you know, Geek Squad, and there's critically a third tab all the way over on the right that says Speed Tag. The cool thing with that one is that when you do each speed test, uh, you can actually name them. So the idea with that, that's gonna more come into testing your internet throughout your home, which usually becomes more of a concern. You know, sometimes you wanna take the business call in the bedroom where the kids aren't, and sometimes the bedroom's on the other side of the house on the second floor. So since you can test multiple rooms and save the speed for each room, you know whether or not your speed is being limited by your equipment because it's working great here, but not over here, or if it's more being limited by the speed you're paying for. Interesting. Okay, so I have um, firmware updates. What yeah, is that? So just like a computer, uh, routers are basically a computer. So um, they actually do provide updates for them. Most critically, firmware updates are gonna be for security purposes. Now, finding them can be a bit of a process. Um, it's something personally, every time my mother needs that done, I have to go over and help her. Um, and Geek Squad is open in a limited fashion, so if you aren't comfortable with doing that yourself, you can still call the 1-800-Geek-Squad number. They can help you over there, or using actually Best Buy Home app I mentioned before, 
you can actually uh, text chat with an agent in there. I know uh, several of my agents are working from home right now and are able to do that. But um, the big thing is you'll usually need to type a number in your um, web browser. It's usually going to be a convoluted number. Um, if you want to try this at home, the usual number is 192.168.0.1. Um, that zero could also be a couple other numbers. So if you do some Googling on your specific model of router, you're probably gonna find some steps in there on how to firmware update it. And newer routers actually, some of them do do this process automatically. So if you have a newer, nicer router, especially some of what are called mesh network systems, so basically routers where you have to have multiple different routers. Usually those routers are a little nice and will automate the process, but it's still worth checking in. That can sometimes increase your speeds a little bit, or most importantly, um, getting security updates. Um, sometimes vulnerabilities are found, and that's how those updates get done. Um, real quick, if anyone is watching and you have a couple of questions that you want answered about internet usage... Oh, you're cutting see? out a little, Emma. What are you oh. saying? I'm speaking to the audience right there. Um, if you oh. guys have any questions that you want answered about the internet usage right now during quarantine, um, just leave them in the comments. Um, I'll be scrolling through them. And um, as long as we have um, Trevor here, I'll ask them for you. Um, so going back to um, this list of questions that I have. So we talked about placement and you said going from one room to another. Um, I have my modem and router um, right pretty much close to my walk-in, my walkway, um, because that's where all the plugins yeah, for everything is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so placement optimization, where, where do you want to have your modem and your router placed in your home? So really comes down, uh, sometimes personal opinion and what's available, but also your personal setup. If you're only going to ever be doing all your work from one room, I would leave your router in the office. But for a more normal use like everybody's going to have, because now with people having all these connected devices, things like you know security cameras, thermostat, phones that now go throughout your whole entire home, um, usually you kind of want it in a central place. But also critically, I know some routers may look a little ugly, but uh, don't shove it in like a closet or an enclosed space. Having to go through walls does decrease um, your internet signal. And while you may see, oh yeah, it's got full bars on my phone, my, you know, I must be connected just fine. While you may be connected just fine, it may be cutting your speed down as you get further away from the router. Um, that was why I was mentioning you know, speed test in multiple different rooms, critically the rooms that you're going to be doing that more important work in. Um, but yeah, usually you want to, you know, at eye level in a room if you can, although that one's not that big of a deal, but just the biggest thing is out in the open. Um, that's why a lot of newer routers, I don't know if you can see the ones behind me, but um, have a more pretty looking uh, design, for lack of a better way to put it. And your other thing is, if you do have a bigger home, um, you may want to look at um, what's called a mesh network, or I prefer to call them whole home Wi-Fi systems, where you actually have multiple different routers that you can have throughout your home. Um, the critical thing with those, they work a little different than extenders and have much better results than extenders do. Um, you're able to blanket your whole home with good coverage. That way, no matter whether you're in the upstairs bedroom or in the living room on the other side of the house or in the entryway, that's gonna help with that. Personally, I rock a uh, mesh network system at home and that can be really helpful because then if you have a big home, even if it's centrally placed, sometimes just one more traditional router isn't going to be enough. So um, I was thinking about getting like a little shelving network to put my modem and router on. Um, would that be okay? Yeah, that'd totally be fine. As long as it's in a mostly unobstructed space, that's the key thing. Okay. And in a centrally located space to where everything's going to need to be. Okay. Um, my other thing, if people are looking to upgrade their router, uh, there's a cool little um, trick that you can do um, for starters. We aren't open, but um, we are still here to take phone calls. So if you do need help picking out a router off of our website, feel free to give us a call. We can help you over the phone. But also, uh, if you hop on our website and you go under products, and I think it's under Wi-Fi, 
um, you'll see that there is a, a little section in there called find your Wi-Fi that actually helps to find specifically the wireless router that's going to work for you. It'll ask you a bunch of questions and make sure that you're getting the right one. And if you feel uncertain, feel free to give us a buzz. I will gladly lend that hand. Um, so we have a question from yeah. the internet. Um, oh, we have a question from the internet. Um, so, uh, where, is, where did it go? Um, this is about Verizon. I don't know if you can answer this actually. Um, so, I get the internet from Verizon so it does not come through the air. I want to know why it sometimes um, goes out during storms. I use the internet for my online tiny business. So why, why does the internet go out during storms? Um. It sounds like I'm not sure if they're using Verizon DSL or if they're using um, like a Jetpack is what they call it or a hotspot from Verizon. Um, both of those, your big thing is with the way that a lot of times those work, they are more bandwidth starved. So when you and all your neighbors are on, your neighbors are actually going to potentially be subtracting from your internet speed. Um, that's why there's actually two devices that you usually have. The router, which is the thing more people think about, but there's also another device called a modem. Modem is pretty critical despite being overlooked frequently. That's what turns non-internet signal that's coming to your house into internet signal. Uh, your thing with those, especially if it's older equipment or equipment that was given to you by your internet service provider, those frequently are going to be older units. Um, why having a newer modem is very essential is you'll see if you start looking at them they'll all say something called jamming and they'll have crazy ridiculously fast numbers listed on them that you'll never achieve but the channels part is the important part because the more channels you have think of it like uh, lanes on the highway uh more lanes on the highway does not increase the speed limit of the highway but it means you're going to be going that speed more often especially when other people your neighbors are on but uh, yeah, as for going out in a storm, I would potentially reach out to your internet service provider, uh, see if maybe they can replace the equipment that might give you a hand with that, or if it's equipment that you got yourself. I don't know how old it is, but if it's you know older than four or five years old, I would probably be looking at upgrading that. Um, internet usage has very much changed over the past you know five years. We went from Okay, you got you know two, maybe three at most. Most people one computer in one room to having devices that now move throughout the entire house, having a lot more devices and having devices that need more bandwidth. Mm -hmm. But I would also potentially be looking at your other options that you could get in your area to something that's maybe phone line based. Those tend to have less issues and be able to give you faster speed. Because critically, especially when doing work from home, you're probably going to want you know 30 to 100 megabits per second of download and 5 to 10 megabits per second of work. Mm -hmm. I know I recently switched internet service providers, and my internet has you know the speed has increased so much, and I just went, oh my gosh, it's a whole new world. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I was actually just going over something similar with my mother the other day. I just got her to flip from a DSL base. Mm -hmm. One, so a phone line based one to a cable one, greatly increased her speed. And we actually just had to increase it again because my brother and two sisters are also at home with my mother, not at college and high school right now. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, they're using a lot. Yeah. So, <laughs> so having everyone under one roof really does affect it. And since everyone is staying home right now, you really need to, you know, increase your bandwidth, increase that, you know, high speed internet because everyone is working from home taking classes, um, and really using up all the internet. So this question, um, check those antennas. I don't have antennas with my internet use, but uh, I, get, I assume some people do. Yeah, so um, some units, like uh, the one that I think is to the right of me over there, um, do have antennas. You want to make sure that they're pointed up to the sky, that they're screwed in all the way. That's part of why newer units have gotten away from putting external antennas on it and using kind of the shell as an antenna because there's less maintenance needed then. 
But yeah, that's just an easy tweak that you can do if you're starting to see your internet become unreliable. Make sure that those are screwed all the way in. And that, well, that is not like covered in dust. And that is generally clean. <laughs> that's going to help with that kind of stuff a little. Even if not, even if not a huge change. Mm -hmm. And then obviously consider your router's age. Yeah. yeah. As I was kind of going over before, yeah, internet usage has rapidly changed. And so having an older router that's using older standards, you're potentially going to run into issues where newer stuff just isn't getting the speed that it needs. You'll notice, like, for example, many newer routers will actually sometimes create two networks. They'll have one that's the normal name, and then one that'll have dash 5G or 5 gigahertz at the end. Um, definitely, if you have a dual band router that does that, use that five gigahertz connection that's um really huge for that it doesn't travel as far of a distance that's why we've gone to more node based routers where you have multiple units but the speed that you get and also critically the lack of interference that you would usually get on the slower 2.4 gigahertz you're gonna not get interference like every time you use the microwave perfectly awesome um so thank you so much for coming on and speaking to me about and speaking to all of us about internet usage. Um, I really appreciate oh, yeah. it because so many people are staying home right now. Um, we, we've been getting a lot of calls specifically. Well, any of the essentials really that uh, people need to work yeah. from home. We've been getting a lot of calls on computers in particular and monitors. But that was the one personally that kind of caught me by surprise mm -hmm. was the amount of networking questions that we've gotten and people who, you know, were picking that kind of stuff up. Which, by the way, if uh, folks don't know at home, uh, we aren't open, but um, we also are still doing like curbside contact-free pickup, as well as ship to home on uh, just about every product that we have available right now. So feel free to do those things. Both of those for the majority of products are also good. Yeah, so um, where can they give you a call at? Um, the easiest way, uh, I don't have the store number in front of me, uh, easiest way if you hop on Google Maps or any of those kind of services, you can pull up the store number on there. The 814 number will work just fine. It's going to the folks, you can't see them, that are way over customer service. We got some phones kind of distanced apart that way we're maintaining all the social distancing guidelines, but we have folks on those phones who are going to be able to take calls, be able to give you a hand. Awesome. Thank you so much for all the work that you've done. Please stay safe. Um, and again, thank We're you. Certainly doing yeah. that. Yeah. Doing awesome. Right awesome. Stay safe and um, I'll talk to you soon sometime maybe. Yeah. Well, hey, feel free to give us a call if you need a hand down. Oh yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You do the same. Bye. Bye. Okay. So that was Trevor Hamilton. Um, so he was absolutely lovely and taught me a lot about the internet. Um, so today also is April 2nd. I hope you guys all did your census. I did my census and it was due yesterday. Um, it, today is April 2nd. It is World Autism Award Awareness Day. As you can see, I am decked out in my blue to show my support. Um, shout out to my dear friend Steven um, who has autism. He's a wonderful human being. He's absolutely fun to hang out with. Um, and he's taught me so much about autism, autism awareness, autism acceptance. Um, and so earlier today, I actually sat down with Dr. Maureen Barber Carey um, and interviewed her about um, what it's like um, right now for people with autism, um, how we can support them and, um, you know, how caregivers are supporting them and how we can just love them and accept them. And she gave me a statistic that I was, I had never heard before that one in five, no, one in 54 children are, is diagnosed with autism. And so just bringing about that awareness and that education and that acceptance um, is just something that really touches my heart because they're first and foremost people. Um, so if we can just spread that awareness, spread that love, um, and spread that education and that learning, um, we can, you know, show the world that first and foremost, they are people. We are all people. We all have our differences. We all have our similarities. 
we have more similarities than you can possibly think. Um, so happy World Autism Awareness Day. Um, if you have someone in your life who is has autism or if you are a carer for someone with autism or if you are someone with autism, um, go out and celebrate today. Celebrate your differences, celebrate your similarities. Um, so, and also, Rock out your blue. Like who doesn't love the color blue? It's such a beautiful color. Um, so blue, blew out your world today. Okay, so um, moving on to our final bit of today. I don't know if any of you guys have seen this, um, but it has become one of my favorite videos. I saw it with my mother um, and I shared it with her and it is absolutely one of the best things I have seen this entire time um, we've been stuck in quarantine. This family, I believe they're from the UK, um, they have, I'm actually going to turn my TV down just a little bit because I think this is going to be rather loud. Um, they're very musically inclined and they have done a parody of One Day More from the hit musical Les Miserables um, about, about being stuck in quarantine. And this is the best thing ever. So I'm going to see, oops, excuse me for one moment. I'm gonna see if I can pull this out and make this bigger. I don't know if I can. Okay, I don't think I can. So hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and I'm gonna play this for you guys. And that's gonna be the end of the show today. And if you guys have any suggestions for any show topics, um, feel free to email me at elewis at wjettv.com. Um, follow me on social media at Emma underscore Rose underscore Lewis. Um, and tomorrow we have a very special guest, the one, the only Lisa Kameni Foster who is and was, well, she was my English teacher in high school. And she's a comedian and she's a powerful, powerful woman. She is amazing. But for now, let's uh, end this, this uh, episode of the social roundup during social distancing with One Day More, the parody. The Marsh family, like so many families, hold together for weeks trying to get along. Posting this video from their home in the UK, changing the lyrics to this song, One Day More, from the musical Les Mis. One day more, another day, another destiny, shopping for our mind. with some much needed levity. Tonight, their message from across the pond. Hi David, we're the Marshes um, and we're sending a hello from uh, Kent in England um, to everybody out in America. Mom, Danielle, Dad, Ben, with this message to America. To you guys in the United States, we hope you're all keeping well, staying safe, staying isolated, um, and having a smile from time to time as you try and control your kids. Music, no surprise, has been the great unite here at home, too. In Buffalo, New York, every night, 5.30 p.m., this. Everyone keeping their distance and their moves. Doug and Nadja playing DJ. As their neighbors dance. With no particular place to go. No particular place to go. And their message tonight, too. Hi, David. We are here every night, rain or shine, until this pandemic is over. Just like that family back in the UK, everyone proving we are in this together.
That's right. We are all in this together. Um, if you have any fun things going on in your life, please send them to me. I want to make this as uplifting and as fun as possible. That's why this is called the social roundup. We are all in this together while we're social distancing. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, have a good Thursday evening. Um, please stay safe. Wash your hands and I will see you guys on Friday. Bye.